Well, good evening and welcome to the Arbor Hills Nature Preserve in Plano, Texas. Tonight's exercise is a field test of the Nextorch P86. Very interesting light because it's not just a light, it has a 120 decibel electronic whistle built in. Well, you may know what I think about whistles and search and rescue from past videos. I'm not going to go into that, but it's a great thing to have as part of your general night kit. The whistle also has another implication, and that is in terms of size of the light. In terms of its output, my first thought would be this is more along the lines of a typical EDC. But in terms of size, I've got average size hands. This looks and feels more like a tack light, even with the lighter weight 18650 battery. So you might want to think about that in terms of how you might carry and deploy it. A couple of different holster options, other accessories available, and you can look at that on the website. Very quickly, I know you want to go into uh, field testing as quick as possible. Uh, protected charging port cover, very aggressive uh, glass breaker strike bezel, however you might see fit to use that. These are your controls, light here. This is the do not touch it in case of emergency loud whistle button. No lockout on the whistle. I guess you could say manual lockout on the light itself. Very simple operation. Low, medium, high output levels. Half and full press on the light switch. Half gives you momentary, always in high. Click to turn on, click to turn off. Now, your basic cycle is always going to be high, medium, low. If you press and hold, you get high, you come off of it, always comes on in medium. So it's very consistent, but perhaps a little bit different than you may be used to. We'll look at this a bit more when we get to the field testing. I know you want to get to that as quickly as possible, so let the sun go down. We'll get out in the preserve, find out exactly what this light can do. At the bridge now, and this is low output. Okay, there we are looking down onto the creek. Medium. And there is high. First practical test of the evening. I'm going to treat this as an EDC style light and run it through that standard test sequence. We are at the playground. It's not quite dark yet. There's still some sun on the horizon and we do have some light around us here at the playground, but not enough for right in front of me. So the scenario here is your kids were playing out here earlier, dropped something. Now you have to come back and search for it. And here is the next torch on low. I think for a typical search in that uh, maybe out to seven possibly 10 yard distance. This is definitely getting the job done. They go around here and we'll take it out to a little bit further distance. And there you have it. This is our path following test. If this is the only light you have, what is the ideal output level to follow a groomed path? This is 
medium. For me, this is uh, this is ideal. I can get really good downrange information on the slope of the terrain, all these little areas where I might like to trip up. I've got some decent side-to-side -side viz with the spill. I can just keep the hot spot centered on the trail, and I've got some decent visibility on what's going on around me. Uh, low, I've already tried, definitely didn't do the trick, and uh, high would be overkill, so uh, medium output level is perfect for this task. Another test at medium output level, looking over another creek, 35, maybe 38 plus yards max line of sight. Entrance to the Outer Loop Trail, you've probably seen this before. Oh, 20, maybe, maybe not quite 20 from where I'm standing to that sign, and then move around to where a concrete path curves off to the right. Now what I want to do is continue this but go into high output. Of course, first I've got to go to low, then back around to high because it's high, medium, low. That's your cycle. Half presses. Now let's just continue moving around here and high. Get out to distances now that are close to 100 yards and then move out beyond that. Minimal visibility into that far tree line. I can tell that there's a tree line there. Um, no information other than there's a tree line there. I've stepped that off in the past. Um, I'm trying to remember, maybe 125-ish. High test, two tree lines in the distance. Good visibility of the first, not so much to the second. As I move off to the left, we lose line of sight. This time of year, I've got a good 110 plus yards line of sight. Uh, not bad overall. All right, since this is the top end output, let's go do a burn down. Here we go in high, over 175 yards out of the tree in the distance. Looks like you may have a bobcat right there. Check them out. All right. Well, anyway, I really can't see any detail regarding that tree. Now, in terms of detail, I did some studying from people who have measured the burn down. It does ramp down aggressively, but it is linear, although for the mathematicians out there, the slope of that line is extremely high, so I don't expect it to ramp down and then get into some steady state during our typical three to four minute test, but we're just going to see how it burns down over a few minutes. I've got my index finger on the head of the light. I'm feeling almost no heat at all, although it is a relatively cold night by Texas standards. Well, we're getting close to a minute and a half. See the eye shine? There's our bobcat. Again, uh, he's not going to give me a very good video. Must be a little bit camera shy. 
Either that or he got a good look at me. I'm like the predator man, one ugly motivator. Well, over two minutes. If you're just interested in using this for short bursts, maybe no more than a minute or two duration, this certainly seems very usable, uh, particularly if you compare it to other EDC style lights. Absolutely no problem with heat whatsoever. Well, as we're over three, I can tell it's lost a little something, but not much. However, from what I understand, this should just keep gradually burning down and down and down and down and down and down. If I remember correctly, the first steady state's about 450 lumens. Uh, I may be a little bit off on that. I think I'm going to let this go up to four, and then we'll call it. I'm at the top of the observation tower. I just want to go over a couple of things regarding this whistle because you're probably not going to get this on the website. I don't know if any other reviews cover it. So first of all, the whistle is, I guess loud is a bit relative. It's not deafening loud. The sound is vectored through these holes and so it kind of tends to go out in all directions. I'm not sure if this is an accurate way of expressing it, but it impresses me as kind of diffusing the sound to a degree. So it's it's nothing like my 140 decibel hyper whistle that I use in search and rescue. If I set that off, I absolutely need to have my fingers in my ears or I need to be wearing hearing protection. Now, this light just kind of seems to invite an underhand grip. And if you're trying to do something under duress and in haste, it's possible you might try to come down onto that whistle button, but you're gonna mash down on the light button as well. Okay, if the light is off and you mash down, you get high. Okay, with that combined with the whistle may not be that bad of a, a deal. Then you come off, it's in medium. However, if the light is on, okay, there we are in medium, and I accidentally mash down on that, I turn it off, and when I release, it's off. So, a little something something for you to think about with regard to how you might intend to use this product. I hope you find that helpful. So while I'm at the top of the observation tower, a quick demo, light off, it's a pretty cold night, like I said, by Texas standards, not wearing gloves. So click to turn on. Did you see that quick burst in high? We come on in medium, half press low, half press high. That's about 35 yards to that tree line. So I just wanted you to see that in action. This is the area I normally do a lot of my wrap-ups, approaching in medium output level. So in terms of summary, I'm just going to give you a couple thoughts and then, as always, let you make up your own mind because the most important opinion in any review is yours. I've got mixed feelings about this light. From an output standpoint, I don't mind high, medium, low 
is your default rotation, but start me out in high. The direct to high from off is nice, but there is no direct to high from on. Okay, we look up here, good 55 plus yards line of sight. I do wish there's low, there's high. I do wish this switch is a bit more tactile. With gloves on earlier this afternoon and then in uh, an off-camera test tonight with my hands much colder, I did blow one of these half presses. I also have some reservations about the light switch and the whistle activation switch being in such close proximity. So if I were invited to think off the top of my head, I would think that, especially given the length and weight of the light, if it has more of a tack form factor, it almost begs for a single or dual tail cap switch than a much larger whistle activation switch on the body closer to the head. That's just me talking off the top of my head right now. I do like having the whistle on the light, but I would strongly encourage people not to use that in lieu of a more traditional whistle. Think of it more as a uh, backup for the backup. If you'd like to see some additional comparisons of this light with other lights, or you'd like to see some additional tests, leave a comment. I'll see what I can do. I'm going to go ahead and uh, shut it down for tonight. And as always, until the next review, thank you very much for your time, and thank you for watching the video.